This is a model of the airplane that Uncle Willis flew, a B-26. And these models are about 45 years old now. And there's another one right up here. And Willis's talk is going to begin in six minutes. Hopefully we've got it right. But anyhow, uh, Will Ewer is uh, from Bonneville. He was a tech sergeant during World War II and a B-26 uh, gunner. And what, 33 missions you 31. flew? 31 missions in the B-26. So these are models of the Martin B-26, which he flew. And uh, this time, uh, Willis, if you'd like to just have at this crowd, Week in and week out, we find them to be very friendly. Okay. So that you don't have to prepare to duck. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, my name is Willis Yor, and as Mark said, I'm from Bountiful. I've lived in Utah most of my life. I, in fact, I've lived in Utah all my life, except for three years and three and a half years that I was in the uh, Army Air Force, or Army Air Corps, and uh, then it was known as the Army Air, Air Corps, and before that, it, or after that, it was uh, converted to the Army, or to the uh, Air Force, uh, United States Air Force. Uh, I, today, uh, in uh, plain talk, we're going to talk about B-26s, Marauders, and uh, I have a couple of models here that uh, we uh, that I uh, made about uh, 35 or 40 years ago. But uh, anyway, uh, the Martin B-26 uh, Marauder is a six-man plane, a medium bomber, and it uh, uh, we flew missions over in uh, France from San Quentin, France, uh, to uh, Germany. Uh, bombing mostly uh, uh, bridges on the Rhine River. And uh, I w wanted to explain the difference between this uh, aircraft and the one that's out in the uh, display area. Uh, the one out there is a Douglas aircraft, and it was a, a originally an A-26. But when they phased out the B-26 after the war, they converted, uh, uh, called uh, that the B-26. But we don't have any of these uh, out on the, uh, out in the uh, display area. And uh, in fact, after the war was over, why most of them were scrapped out and someone said they made Volkswagens out of them. <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, this is a medium bomber, a tactical bomber, and uh, a two engine, and uh, it's, uh, uh, I was in the 387th bomb group and the 559th uh, bomb squadron. And uh, a bomb group consists of about 54 planes, and uh, the squadrons, uh, there are about 18 planes in each squadron. We had three squadrons in uh, in the 387. Uh, and I, uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll have to explain uh, how I uh, got involved in the B-26. Uh, after a radio school at Scott Field in Belleville, Illinois, and gunnery school at uh, Fort Myers, Florida, I was transferred to Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, were in Barksdale Field. And Barksdale Field was called the golf course of, uh, or called the, uh, it was a, a place quite different from the places that we had been. Uh, and uh, they had a golf course and they had a, um, a swimming pool and they had uh, uh, movies, uh, movie theaters. It was a nice place to be, but we had uh, also other duties besides uh, uh, that. We had duties like uh, KP and uh, 
and uh, uh, garbage detail and uh, it wasn't all fun and games. Uh, at Barksdale we received uh, further instructions on uh, uh, flying B-26s and uh, uh, in September of 1944, uh, uh, after we had uh, formed our crews, we uh, went to, uh, uh, we were uh, um, given the word to go over to uh, Savannah, Georgia and pick up a plane from the Martin Aircraft Company. And uh, it was a brand new plane and uh, we were to ferry it uh, across, the, it was in October, we were to ferry it across uh, over to the uh, European Theater of Operations. And uh, uh, at that time of the, they had two routes over, the northern route and the southern route. And the southern route was uh, uh, the one that we took because it was so late in the season. Uh, we had, uh, our first leg of the journey was uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, and then uh, we flew from there to uh, Puerto Rico. And in Puerto Rico, we landed, and uh, it was a, um, a well-kept base, and uh, we had a good runway and everything. But uh, uh, we met uh, um, um, a red-headed, uh, Puerto Rican, and we asked him uh, uh, how come he uh, uh, was red-headed, and he said his uh, ancestors had come from uh, Ireland. Uh, the next, and uh, uh, they mowed the lawns. Uh, they didn't have lawnmowers. They had about uh, 30 or 40 natives li lined up in a row, and they uh, um, had hand shears and they uh, mowed the lawn by hand shearing it all away. And they did a pretty good job and they did it fast. But uh, the next day we went to British Guiana and uh, that's down in South America. And uh, uh, when we got there, well, they uh, uh, took us to our uh, barracks, which was a uh, uh, bamboo, uh, uh, buildings made out of bamboo, and even the floors were uh, bamboo, and some of the uh, members that smoked thought it was a good uh, place because uh, when they uh, uh, got through their cigarette butts, all they had to do was flip them out and they'd fall through the floor. <laughs> and uh, while we were there, they, uh, uh, um, a native came out of the the jungle uh, with a, a load of bananas, and he said, "Me from Texas." <laughs> he uh, gave me. Uh, he he wanted more for his bananas than we could get them here in Utah. <laughs> and, and after escaping the the um, banana merchant, we uh, uh, headed for B Belém, Brazil, and Belém is right on the equator. And our Air Force base was uh, um, <clears throat> was uh, uh, right in the jungle. We never got a chance to go into Berlin. We just uh, 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 took off the next day, and we went to uh, uh, Natal, Brazil. And Natal, Brazil is uh, right on the coast, and it's uh, the uh, the launching place that uh, we we took for to go to uh, Ascension Island. Ascension Island is uh, an island out uh, um, about halfway between uh, South America and Africa, and uh, uh, this was the longest uh, journey of our mission. Uh, longest uh, mission, or not mission? It was the longest. Uh, uh, um, that we had to fly um, on any of the legs that we took. And uh, heading out, uh, we had extra gas tanks, but uh, about halfway between 
and the town and ascension, we were, uh, our plane, uh, uh, both engines stopped, and uh, I was sitting in a, a radio compartment, and uh, I didn't know what was happening, so I yelled into the intercom and asked the pilot what was going on. And, uh, he, he didn't answer me, and uh, uh, about, and uh, we were losing altitude, and about, uh, I guess it wasn't uh, much more than a minute, but it seemed to me like uh, uh, a lot more, a lot longer than that. And uh, then the <coughs> engines finally came back on, and I asked the flight engineer what had happened, and he said that uh, the pilot just wanted to make sure we used all the gas out of one tank before transferring to the other. <laughs> but uh, that wasn't the story. Uh, Fifty years later at the uh, reunion, I uh, heard, uh, or I talked to the co-pilot, uh, Pierre, and he said, he told me what really happened. What happened was that on the uh, uh, extra gas tanks we had, they had a, um, a valve, and it was up in back of the co-pilot seat uh, in back of him, and uh, it, to s switch the tanks he had to uh, reach back of him in the opposite direction. And what happened was uh, he was trying to turn the valve in the wrong direction. Oh. And <laughs> he, <laughs> he said he struggled with all his might to turn the, turn the valve and it wouldn't turn uh, before he discovered that he was trying it in the wrong direction. And when he flipped it back the other direction, when we were, we were back in flight again, we uh, made Ascension Island without any problems. Uh, if if uh, in his rush uh, he had sheared off the pin that held uh, the transfer valve, uh, <coughs> we'd have had the ditch in the Atlantic Ocean and uh, uh, I'm thankful that that didn't happen. Uh, uh, on Ascension Island, we stayed there a couple of days, and uh, uh, I noticed at night uh, there were giant spider crabs that came out and uh, went down to the ocean, and uh, there's hundreds of them just uh, uh, right about day, uh, just about uh, sunset, why they all headed down for the ocean, I don't know. I guess they did that every night. <laughs> the next day we left uh, uh, Ascension Island for uh, West Africa. And, uh, I don't know, they changed the names of towns uh, or of countries so much in Africa now that uh, I don't, uh, then it was known as French West Africa. And uh, uh, we stopped at a, uh, and then we went from there to a, well, while we were there, it was in the jungle again, and we had uh, Phil uh, uh, top the tanks off with, uh, we didn't have to do it, but they had the natives uh, top the tanks off with five gallon uh, uh, cans of gasoline. And, it took them probably a, a couple hours to to load our uh, uh, plane up with gasoline. Then we went to Yaf, uh, which is uh, just close to Dakar, West Africa, and uh, there they had a nice runway and they had uh, uh, it was a, a good uh, base, but uh, and we had a chance to swim there for a while. Um, and uh, someone told us there that uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the swimmers had gone out too far, and beyond the breakwater where the uh, dolphins were there, and he had uh, the undertow uh, taken him out too far, and he said that the dolphins pushed him back into shore. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, huh. The next. Uh, place we stopped was Marrakech. Marrakech is uh, at the base of the Atlas Mountains, and we were asked to, uh, uh, or we had to stay there 
uh, before going to Wales uh, in England. And uh, that uh, uh, was another long trip. And we had to skirt uh, around uh, around the uh, uh, country of Spain because Spain was still uh, uh, in, uh, wouldn't allow uh, American aircraft to go over it. And so we had to skirt around on the west side. We landed in Wales and then we took our plane from Wales to uh, 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 Sheffield, England, where they were uh, stripped of their yeah, yeah, the extra gas tanks and and loaded with armament uh, for combat over in France. Uh, this was after after the invasion of France, and we were stationed at. Uh, 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 well, they took us first from England uh, to Stone, England, and there we were replacements for uh, for those. Uh, uh, crew members who had uh, uh, completed 50 missions or had uh, had uh, uh, been shot down, and uh, we uh, went from Stone over to a uh, uh, our base at 75 miles southeast of uh, of Paris, and uh, on the way over we uh, flew low across the English Channel and back uh, and after we got over, over the English Channel we got it, uh, they put me on a train uh, to go to San Quentin uh, and uh, it was only it was only about 75 miles away but it took us uh, 24 hours to get there uh, because uh, and the train was loaded and it had just snowed and uh, there was no room for me to sit, so I had to uh, take my barracks bag and sit in the vestibule out uh, between the tra uh, between the cars, and uh, it stopped quite often. Uh, the road, the tracks were not in very good shape because of the bombing that we had done before. Uh, we had come in there, but anyway. Uh, we got to the base, and at the base, we had uh, uh, <clears throat> we had uh, <clears throat> uh, at the base we had a, a place uh, that uh, uh, it was a bulletin board, and they uh, scheduled us for uh, for our missions uh, each each day there and it told which uh, missions we go on and but it didn't tell you the target and actually we as gunners didn't know what the target was all we knew was that we had to, to uh, stay or had to be ready after we passed the bomb line to for German fighters and uh, during the Battle of the Bulge uh, which was the time that I was there, uh, the weather was so bad that we didn't, uh, we were unable to fly. And uh, uh, at night, well in the daytime too, you couldn't see uh, farther than three or four feet uh, uh, in front of you. And we had to stand start guard duty on our planes and uh, stand and uh, uh, all we could uh, rely on was uh, was sound. We couldn't uh, uh, we couldn't see anything. And uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, gunners on the uh, in the 558 squadron uh, told us Terazowitz is his name, but he told us that he was uh, um, um, guarding one of the planes and. Uh, Heard a noise and he uh, asked for the uh, password and didn't get it. And uh, so he got his. Uh, he had. His, we had rifles and he, he picked it up and was ready to shoot. And uh, then he heard a, a snort from 
uh, one of the horses. <laughs> and he was glad that he didn't have to shoot the horse, or, and glad that, especially glad it wasn't a German. And uh, he, uh, uh, in my first mission that I flew, that was kind of spooky, but uh, it was actually a milker, and I didn't. We didn't have to engage with any uh, fighters uh, from the German Air Force, and we didn't have any flags. And it was a good uh, thing because I was, uh, uh, I guess that would have, uh, uh, well, anyway, it would have been a, a traumatic experience for me. Uh, my uh, first mission was as waste gunner. And, uh, and uh, we, our pilot, we didn't have the same crews that we had trained back with in Barksdale Field. Uh, they assigned them to uh, other play, other uh, crews. And the only two people that uh, I trained with in Barksdale Field uh, that flew with me on missions was uh, the tail gunner, uh, Sharp, and uh, um, Peter, the co-pilot. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, we got, uh, 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 we flew uh, about uh, 10 to 12,000 feet above, uh, and uh, uh, we'd drop our bombs uh, about, uh, uh, well, the bombs had a forward uh, speed, so we didn't have to go right over the target. But uh, on the bridges, the Germans uh, knew exactly which way we had come in uh, to do a, a bridge bombing. Uh, we never bombed the bridge uh, and crossways. We always flew in the direct line of the bridge because uh, it was a larger target. and. Uh, uh, they were. They had their uh, 88 uh, and 90 millimeter uh, 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 anti-aircraft gun uh, ready for us, and we were like shooting ducks because we had to hold a steady course while going down, while going uh, uh, on the bomb run. And this. Uh, uh, <coughs> Let's see. Um, about the most unforgettable bomb run that we did was one that uh, uh, when I flew uh, uh, to, uh, was about my sixth mission to Koblenz uh, on the Rhine River and we had to take a bridge out there. The bridge was still being used by the Germans and uh, we uh, had to, uh, and blow the bridge up if we could. Uh, it had been uh, bombed before, but they were still using it. So uh, there we had flak and we had fighters. Uh, that, uh, um, the tail gunner uh, uh, was, uh, had most of the action. And, uh, mine, uh, mine was underneath uh, the waste gunner. And then the, the turret gunner on top, he had a few encounters. Uh, uh, when we dropped our bombs there, we uh, immediately made a 180 degree turn and, and uh, lost uh, altitude to gain speed to get out of the uh, area of the uh, flag gunners. Uh, when we got back, uh, uh, when we got back to the base, uh, uh, several of, of our planes uh, had quite uh, severe damage, and uh, they had to be repaired by the, uh, the ground crew. But uh, they were uh, they worked on them uh, all, um, and most of them were back, flyable and back ready for another mission the next day. Uh, 
I flew 31 combat missions, and uh, uh, during that time, uh, uh, there was only two times that uh, I was unable to, that our, our crew didn't get back to the uh, base. The first one was uh, when we uh, uh, went over a uh, target and, and got flag, and on the way home, I, uh, just after we got out of the bombing mission, uh, the uh, right engine uh, had to be shut down because the oil pressure was gone, and it was about uh, it was about uh, ten or fifteen, ten ten degrees below zero up there, and uh, uh, we uh, he landed uh, on a an air. Uh, we found a, a fighter airstrip that we landed on, and uh, we covered up. Uh, uh, we, as we came in for landing, we were a lot heavier than the uh, uh, fighters, and uh, we curled up their landing mat. And when we got uh, out of the plane, why there was a colonel there that uh, uh, was uh, uh, in a mad rage, telling us that. We had ruined his hair, uh, uh, yes. uh, but uh, we didn't have much choice because we were losing altitude and w wouldn't make the base. But uh, he said, you're really in trouble. And uh, we uh, uh, stood outside the, there and he took off and he said he'd be back and uh, stood outside there and uh, by the side of the plane. and. Uh, Pilot decided to get out of there if because uh, uh, we had enough gas to get back to the uh, uh, base, and uh, uh, so he uh, uh, said to inspect the engine, and the engine hadn't had any flag uh, or, or oil leak. So he said, "Let's try it." And so they got the engine going, and uh, we decided to take off. And, we went, uh, took off, and rolled up the rest of the uh, runway. Uh, anyway, we never heard any anything more about the incident. That was the end. Uh, and then one time, I don't know if any of you are familiar with uh, uh, the, uh, they were trying to uh, develop a system to bomb through clouds, and they had a, it was called uh, uh, PATH, PATH, uh, hmm, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, uh, we uh, flew around over uh, the base long enough to try to try this system out, and uh, most of us uh, ran low on gas, so we uh, didn't, couldn't make it back to the base, and we had to land in, in uh, another, uh, in uh, another short runway, and uh, we were ready to crash, but uh, we were fortunate enough to make it uh, 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 and without any trouble. But the only trouble was we couldn't get off the uh, base again because it was uh, uh, such a short runway, and we had to be transported back to our own base uh, on a GI truck. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, 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 I'll have to tell you about uh, some of the uh, places that uh, we were. They didn't have a piano, uh, a piano, so uh, the Red Cross uh, set up a coffee and donut shop right close to the base where it was easy. And uh, a couple of places had a piano, and I uh, played uh, music uh, there. Not, nothing, uh, nothing formal, but just a bunch of World War uh, II songs that I played while I was uh, 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 just for entertainment. And I'll uh, I'll play the uh, Saint. Uh, you remember Glenn Miller? Before he was taken, uh, or before he died, 
that the <coughs> aircraft uh, uh, he had his band over there and they played the St. Louis Blues March. And that's one of the songs. I was going to have a piano here, but uh, uh, they couldn't arrange it, and so I got a CD here. I'll play this St. Louis Blues March. Uh, I played that one was uh, one that was uh, most famous during World War II uh, with Glenn Miller and his band. And uh, uh, I uh, uh, played it while I was overseas uh, and uh, whenever there's a piano available. Uh, uh, after the war, uh, we were uh, uh, sent to uh, Amiens, France uh, uh, at a base there. A wing uh, transport back to the United States by uh, 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 by uh, uh, ocean liner, and uh, uh, while I was there, why there's a little town called Rosiers right next to Amiens, and uh, that's where they had the Red Cross uh, donut shop, and they had a piano there, and I, I played there uh, several times, uh, and then. Uh, when we got, uh, uh, we were able to go to Paris uh, uh, for about a week and, and travel around through Paris, but most of the units, that, or most of the places that you wanted to see was restricted and off limits, so we didn't get to see much of Paris. Uh, and then we went down to uh, Le Havre, uh, and uh, there, we got on board uh, um, SS Lejeune, and it was a converted uh, um, a troop ship. And uh, there were so many people on it that when you went to sleep on the racks on the side of the wall, why they had uh, uh, the, you were they were so tight that if you moved, uh, turned over. You could you touch the one just above you, <laughs> but anyway, it wasn't. Uh, it, we were just glad to be there, and uh, a lot of them, <coughs> uh, a lot of us wanted to come home and go to uh, go to school 
under the GI Bill because it was uh, something they just started and and it was they paid for all my uh, tuition and my uh, books and gave me fifty dollars a month besides and uh, I uh, I uh, finished my uh, course at the University of Utah in engineering and worked uh, for about uh, oh, uh, 28 years for uh, Uni Univac and it's now Unisys and I worked here in, in uh, Plant and Salt Lake. And that's about it. If there's any questions that anyone has, would uh, I'd tr I'll try to answer them. <laughs> So, I'm not clear what flak is when you said oh. the, the plane got flak. Yeah, flak is, uh, is the shells they shoot up. They're 88 millimeter shells, and the projectile has a, an explosive charge in it. And when, oh. the, when they get to the right altitude, it's set so that they will explode and throw shrapnel all around. Oh. And that's, we call it flak. Okay. Yeah. I think there's part of enough, or a B-26 out here. Yeah, the B-20. Far end. Yeah, the yeah, you do have a B-26 out here, but that's a Douglas B-26. No, 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 Out, outside. Oh, outside. Part of a, there's part of a fuselage way down the end there. Oh. It's oh. near that, that building down there, south end of the display. Oh. And, uh, there's not is, much of it, just the nose of it. I'm sure that's oh, good. Yeah, okay. there's a little bit more than those, and uh, we're going to start reconstruction on that sometime in probably the next six months. Oh. It's the next in line to go into our restoration hangar. Oh, that's good. Uh, uh, it's a big mar mar marauder? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, yeah. So. I think so. Well, uh, there was one f uh, flying uh, marauder that uh, um, uh, crashed. Uh, at one of our reunions, and they fixed it. It was the landing gear, and they fixed it up. It was called the Caroline, and uh, uh, two or three reunions later, why they uh, uh, it uh, crashed and killed both the oh. pilot and the co-pilot. But uh, I don't know of any others that are flying now. Uh, most of them, we flew over to uh, before we came home. We flew, uh, got rid of our ammunition in the English Channel, and uh, then flew over uh, to Austria and parked them in a large field over there that was uh, probably as big as, as Holloway Air or Hill Air Force Base, wow. and uh, they were stacked as close as they could, and then uh, I guess they sold the scrap metal. I don't know. Cool. Yes. What, what were your duties? Uh, my, my duty was, uh, uh, I was a radio operator gunner, and I uh, uh, operated the two 50 caliber machine guns out of the waste window. And uh, there I, uh, uh, in uh, my last 12 missions, uh, they transferred me up to the nose, and all I did there was just uh, drop the bombs off the lead bomber, and uh, uh, that was most of our um, missions on the Rhine River, that just drop uh, and try to blow up the bridges, which we had to rebuild after we got <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah, who wants it over there? Yeah. What's your feeling of the B-26 as a, as a combat aircraft? Uh, uh, the B-26? Mm -hmm. It was a Cadillac of... Uh, all, <laughs> all uh, uh, medium bombers. We <coughs> noticed that the B-25, which had more range than we did, but when you get her to the end of the runway and rev it up, it sounded like it was going to shake to pieces. Well, that wasn't the case of the B-26 uh, Marauder. It was solid. You could, uh, and then also um, the B-7, the B-24s were about the same as the B-25s. Uh, that was a four-engine bomber, and uh, uh, I noticed when they were at the end of the runway, ready for takeoff, they would uh, 
uh, rev up the engines as high as they could, and it would shake. It just <laughs> sounded like it was going to fall into a bunch of the scrap. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the um, bomber, uh, uh, the bomber uh, we flew was uh, one that was developed uh, uh, just before the war, and it didn't have any uh, um, any uh, time like the B-17s or the B-24s or the B-25s. It didn't have any time to uh, try it out, and it went directly from the drawing board to the to the flight training, and. Uh, we ran into a lot of trouble uh, early. In, in fact, uh, Harry Truman, who was the uh, head of the Arms Forces, uh, well, the Committee on the Arms Horses, uh, wanted, uh, wanted, that was before he was president, wanted to scrap all the B-26s and go into another aircraft. But we didn't do that. Uh, the, B-26G, which we flew over to uh, England, and it was uh, the Model G, and it had been uh, refined uh, and uh, uh, changed so that uh, it was a, a slower bomber, but it, uh, it was a lot safer. And uh, we had one of the best safety records over in Europe of any plane uh, of any of the combat uh, oh. units. Is there? Oh. When uh, when you were bombing a bridge, uh, what uh, at about what altitude? Well, we bombed around nine to twelve thousand feet, uh, something like that. Uh, I think there's one or two that we came down lower, but we couldn't come down too much lower because uh, the. Germans were pretty good gunners. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have the Norden bomb? He used the Norden bomb site in the B-26. Yeah, the Norden, uh, but that was only in the lead planes. We had flights of six, and we'd all drop off the lead plane. And uh, they had a bombardier in the lead plane, and he would, uh, he would, uh, uh, when we saw him drop the bombs while we drop at the same time. And that's, uh, uh, there are six planes that drop all our bombs at the same time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? I flew, <coughs> I flew P-38s out of Santa Rosa, California. Oh, uh-huh. For quite a while. Yeah. West Coast Defense. And we had B-26s uh, tow targets. Oh, yeah, yeah. And those suckers are there. Rev them up as high as they could go before they released them, you know. Uh, yeah. I don't know how they had the cable, but they, they'd take off and they'd be going, you know, and, uh, and they'd take the slack out of that cable and they'd just come down like that. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the last uh, time I flew off of Santa Rosa, California, we they had a, oh, I don't know what they call a project where they wanted to get every airplane available on the base in the air at the same time. Uh -huh. They got 100 P-38s wow. and three, three P-26s leading them. Oh, uh -huh. They took off and they flew up to uh, over towards Reno and that way and up, up to Seattle mm -hmm. and followed the coastline back down to San Francisco and back to Santa Rosa. Oh. Uh, that was a big flight of airplanes. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, the B-26, uh, the earlier models were a little bit more risky and higher speed than ours, but uh, uh, they did use them for tow targets, or not, not the plane itself. Tow targets. Tow targets. Is there anything else? Anybody have a question? Okay. Well, let's, let's That was a great story very yeah. well told. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. And when we finish our B-26, we'll come up and let hey, you, you crash a bottle over the nose. <laughs> 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 Mr. Benner, we've got a little memento here for you. We do this. To
for the speakers. Winter's coming. Hey, well, let me try it on. All right. Uh, really nice of you to come. I really, really, really appreciate that. And we hope you find them. I found a home up there and will come visit us. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Got it? Yeah, there it is. This is, like is that the right size? Yeah, it's just right. Okay. I like my old flag jack. <laughs> well, thanks again, Lois. Okay. Thank you very, very much. These are some of the planes right outside the Hill Air Force Museum where Willis spoke today on October 16. 2010. Let's see if I can get some of these planes here as I'm driving along. Comes a car, I'll have to speed things along here. 